Q Half Life, what might be the most legendary first person shooter of this generation. Now, this game has generated quite an immense following, including the sequel, Half Life 2, and its episodes 1 and 2, which eventually came afterwards. What they managed to create was one of the most famous legacies in gaming history created by Lord Gaben himself praise Lord Gaben um, what we have here is just but let's let, what do I even begin with this masterpiece that is Half-Life okay well upon Half-Life's release people were just sexually aroused why were they sexually aroused? well Quite simply, the introduction was something that had never been seen before in video games. This was, at the time, not like my Doom 3 video, mind you, which I mentioned also that there was an introduction, which came many years later. Half-Life had an introduction of source. In fact, you started off on a tram going to fuck knows where, anomalous materials, and you get to see what it's like in this kind of eerie facility in New Mexico, which is where the game takes place. Um, yes, Black Mesa, of course, everybody knows this now. Um, but you got to see what things were like. You get to see, kind of, experiment with how society in this wonderful facility operated, and how it differed from what you may notice in, in most video games where you kind of just get dropped into the combat. Um, so you get a backstory built up quite quickly and as soon as you walk in the game. And you end up kind of generating quite an eerie atmosphere in the beginning, but also kind of epic in scale. You know, it's you can see it's kind of a very high-end, expensive, highly expensive research facility um, dedicated to possibly the most important research in human history where, um, well, I, mean, I can't give away plot points, but you've probably played the game by now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, think of this. Your main character, Gordon Freeman, is, uh, is an MIT graduate. So, with the... Theoretical, theoretical physics background, and his, and his back, his back, his background was in theoretical physics. Let's just ignore the voice in the back. <laughs> Anyway, um, so, you can see it's quite an, an impressive research facility that, you know, did quite a lot of work. And in retrospect, the game is, is still legendary today, and, and it, you know, looking back on it, it's probably not because of the gunplay. In fact, you notice as you go through the game, the combat is, eh, it's nothing really special. They do have some interesting guns, such as the Gluon gun and the Tau Cannon, which are whole lot of fun to play with and um in half-life 2 both of these were removed from the game but the tau cannon does make an appearance in half-life 2 on the buggy in um uh, highway 17 i believe is the map name uh yeah when, when, you know when you get the car and it, with the magnet whatever um so that also shows up with the same sounds from the original game so that was that's a nice thing but you know the guys I was saying the gunplay wasn't really that incredible back then it was considered you know quite amazing uh, in fact they're ba back in the day you know it was just other than doom it was kind of the most amazing thing I have now now I might have to add that the um, game was created off of a modified quake engine uh, so it's essentially modification in fact it was originally a modification for Quake um, called Quiver, and they all eventually molded into a different game called Half-Life, and there's also had its own 
It also had its its own problem. They had to remake the game. Right, they had to scratch it and remake it right when it was about to be released, and they had one year to do it. So they made this great game in one year. Okay, that's been established, right? Now let's just look at the story. Uh, I don't know. If you look at the story now, though, it's really it's it might not be the story so much that that people love but so much the way it was presented in fact the story is kind of simple you end up you know i don't want to like i said i don't want to give away points but um you end up just kind of roaming around and trying to uh essentially escape the facility and get um essentially get get help but uh deliver messages to the outside world uh so that's, I mean, the story's really not that incredible, but it's the atmosphere of the game that it delivered. You really felt like you were in this, you know, this underground facility in, called Black Mesa. Um, the atmosphere is kind of eerie. Um, everything just kind of went into place. You know, you had these, these silly scientists. They had some really funny lines, in fact, in the game. These NPCs were kind of lifelike in that way. You had the, the military that came in. Um, and they also had great AI. In fact, back then, though, you'll notice that... Back then, the AI for the Marines, they were terrifying. They were ruthless. They were, For the time, they were actually quite intelligent, able to flank and all that. Now that we kind of take that for granted. But back then, that was a, a very, very new kind of feature uh, for a very intelligent AI. And they were, t <laughs> they, were, they were quite tough to kill back then, I mean, you know, especially if you were young and you played the game. Get pissed about the damn soldiers everywhere. Um, but, you know, as I was saying, the gunplay is not that crazy, the story is not that crazy, just the presentation of it was crazy. It created quite an epic scope, in fact. One that developed into Half-Life 2, which came later, obviously. But it really ended up generating just an immense following of people, as I've said before. Um, just because the story was so interesting to people, and everybody played the game ultimately. Everybody played the game. In fact, anybody that played the original Half-Life and went on multiplayer around its release, um, it was slammed with players. And uh, if anybody remembers those pros that would use a tail cannon, because they, can, they could jump up to the fucking ground, jump off the ground, fly around, and kill people through walls with it. So that was always fun. Um... It was a whole lot of fun playing that game back in the day, and everybody, you know, you get the you get the hazard suit. People loved it. The musical score also was was quite interesting. Um, it had a lot of different sounds. You had kind of like a this one piece of like metal kind of music in a way, um, at least heavy industrial. Um, you had a lot of eerie sound effects, and everything just kind of worked so well to build this atmosphere that ended up becoming Half Life, Half Life Two, and all that. Um, in fact, I, I've i never even uh, – sorry. I've played the music a lot myself. I love the music from Half-Life. It's just great, uh, considering it's one of my favorite games. But, I mean, when, when you get in the game and you get the hazard suit, it's just like the <laughs> – it's just some, some of the best feelings ever to get. You feel, you feel it's really tough with it. You get the heads-up display. It's really cool. It's just a really cool experience to play that game. Uh, it's kind of lifelike in that sense, but um, it's just there's a lot to there's just a lot to think about with that game, um, and of course, as I said, years later when Half Life Two came out, that game was considered revolutionary as well because of the physics engines uh, that they created, and the graphics were great, of course, Source Engine and created um, Counter Strike Source and Dave Defeat Source, which is also another mod for Half Life originally. Um, and it, it obviously just made if – if you think about it, Counter-Strike, for example, that was a Half-Life mod. So Team Fortress – well, Team Fortress was originally a mod for Quake as well, but ultimately became a Half-Life mod when purchased by um, developers of, of uh, Half-Life, just as Counter-Strike was. Um, but in, in that case, you can see – the success of Half-Life. You could see why in, in that, why it became so important for today. And that, that's something that needs to really be, be hit home, that the game is important more than it is really a great game at this point. I mean, obviously we can all talk about the intro. That was one of the best scenes in the game. Uh, if not the best in the game was the intro scene. 
Um, however, the, the importance of the game to first-person shooters and story-driven games is, is monumental. In fact, without Half-Life, there wouldn't be the kind of story-driven games you see today. It just kind of it, it showed that that kind of game was both desirable and something that could be made, and clearly can be successful. So it's not just it's not just a normal basic game, just like Doom was. Um, it, it revolutionized the first-person shooter franchise, um, and many games have tried to copy it. If you think about it, um, almost every game, in fact, that you can probably think about is at least tried to mimic it in some way. It it is just a very important game. Everybody needs to know about Half-Life. Everybody should play it. Or at least at least know something about it. And that's just because it's such an important game. I mean, I can't say it's the best game. When I was growing up, I used to think it was absolutely the best game ever. And, you know, at that time it kind of was at least one of the best games of all time. But growing up and seeing how kind of simplistic the level design is, how simplistic the story is, the enemies aren't really that challenging anymore. It, it didn't really age as well as some of the other games like Doom 3 have, have aged. Um, so it's not something I really desire to pop into and play all the time anymore as much as I used to. So I suppose, I suppose it has aged, but it's still something that is just so important to know about because of the legacy it's created. And maybe someday we'll see Half-Life 3. This, these developers tend to only create a game every 10 years, but uh, I believe 2008 was episode 2, and we're heading on many, many years since the last game now. We're getting close to 10 years. Yeah, 8 years now. Um, so... That is something to consider. And every time they make a game, though, if you've noticed, they've only made so many. But every time they've made a game, it's been great. So I, I think it's worth waiting for. Try out Half Life if you haven't already. And if you, I, I, most of you have probably played Half Life Two, but go back and play Half Life One, and you can see why Half Life Two might be might be honestly a, a better game, or at least more fun, but just doesn't have the same atmosphere of half the original Half-Life, the same quality of atmosphere as the original Half-Life. Um, but you'll see why Half-Life was able to develop into games like Half-Life 2. So you'll understand why the games are great and why they've revolutionized the genre. Keep that in mind, folks.